Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live. Today, we are here to do a live Q&A, answer any questions about the baby maker, electric bikes, and our production process as well. Just a quick itinerary for the day at 2.05, so five minutes from now. Troy will be coming in to give a global logistics update. At 2.25, we will be joined by Rachel, a new member of our writer support team, just to introduce herself and say, hey, you may have been uh, emailing back and forth with her. 2.35, by popular demand, Sarah will be coming in. And at 2.45, Ben will be coming in to chat and answer questions as well. So I'll be going over the YouTube chat questions. If there is any, if you're not watching on YouTube, please be sure to click that link and watch it on YouTube where you'll see the live chat. You'll be able to answer, ask questions directly to me and we'll go through those one by one, first in, first out, just like our plan is with the baby makers. So from Ray, uh, very first question. Hey, Rob, are the bikes from the third factory allocated for a specific region, uh, for example, the U.S., or will they go all over the world by order number? Ray, great question. The ones we wrote about in yesterday's production update, there are three containers, uh, the very first ones ready from there, going to the U.S. After that, they will be going to different locations, but mostly for the U.S., I believe we may have some for, for Canada. Troy will be able to answer more clearly there, but um, we've got thousands of outstanding bike orders in the U.S., so that should cover most of them, and they are just pros at that facility. Ray says, loved yesterday's production update video. Nice. I'm glad you liked it. Really glad you liked it and that they are appreciated. Ken, thanks, Rob, and all of FLX for your dedicated hard work getting everyone their bikes. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, Ken. We really appreciate that. We know we're behind, behind our original estimates for many, many of the bikes. So apologies on that. We are getting them out though. They will all be delivered in short order. Chris, great to see you here. Very good to see you on the live. Thanks for coming. Doing well. A bit tired today, to be honest. It's, it's been an absolutely very long week, but uh, we're tearing it through it. And this is one of the highlights of my day is getting to chat, chat to you guys. Will you, Willard H asked, where's my bike? That is a very common question that we get. We do have some uh, more updated estimates on our support website. And if you look at our Indiegogo page, every week we're doing a production update with a global status update, which will give you a better picture of exactly where we are in terms of fulfillment for each location. At the moment, we cannot pinpoint exactly where each order is, so specific order number, exactly when that will come. It's just impossible. Considering the current logistics um, logistics status worldwide, it's, it's just insane. So even if we send a container now, I can't even tell you the month that that container will arrive to us because they get delays leaving port, delays coming into port, delays by customs sometimes. Uh, it's, a, it's a wild, wild time right now in terms of global freight. So we're doing our best and keeping everybody updated as far as where we're at. We can't pinpoint exactly when your bike will arrive, but we're very confident over the next few months, almost all the bikes will be delivered. Chris says, it's 5 a.m. here in Indonesia. Wow, getting up early to watch this. Thanks, Chris. Mark, I watched Sarah build a baby. Sweet. Heck yeah. We've got quite a few uh, assembly videos on the baby makers. Every, every once in a while, something comes up. We just want to add that to the videos to make sure that they are assembled in the safest manner possible. Any update on Babymaker Pro's 19-inch matte black shipping to U.S.? I ordered in June. I saw there were estimates for Feb March, but I just wanted to see if there was more info. Brian, I'm going to allow Troy to answer that in more detail, exactly uh, which SKUs of bikes, et cetera. He will be able to expand more on that. We have been shipping uh, many 19-inch bikes. The dropper pros came out a little bit slower than the uppers uh, because of the availability of the TRP brakes. However, they are going out regularly now. Martin says, yeah, Canada. Heck yeah. So we did send two containers to Canada. One is on the water. One, I believe, 
Uh, Troy will confirm this, but it's either it's left or it's leaving shortly. And all of these shipping notifications for both of those containers have been sent out. That covers the majority of our orders to Canada. I'll tell you exactly how many. So that is uh, just over 80% of our orders to Canada have been shipped, which is, which is very exciting. Daniel says, got a glimmer of hope, got my address confirmation, five plus weeks, hopefully. Hell yes, Daniel. I'm really, really glad that came to you. Uh, that, that means the bike's been allocated and that it's, uh, that it's in a container, likely on the water, and it's just, just some weeks out now. So thanks for your patience. It will be arriving with you soon. Willard, thank you, Rob. I was just messing with you. I know y'all are working tirelessly on production at distribution. I'll wait patiently. Uh, thank you, Willard. I I swear I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I wish I could hear you say it. Uh oh, guest of the hour. We've got Troy in the house. All right, look, I've got your microphone up here, and let's make sure you're in in the scene, okay? All right. Good if you can scoot forward a little bit, All I took right. the autofocus off to oh, keep okay. you in focus today. Everybody was complaining they couldn't see your beautiful face oh, and focus. Oh, jeez, I need this last satin week. lens, that's for sure. Okay. <laughs> Where should we start? Well, reference? yeah, so I had a, a bunch of questions. Basically, all the hard questions I told everybody you would cover. So um, okay. if you want to give us a bit of an update, and I have a couple specific questions for you. For okay. example, any updates on Babymaker Pro's 19-inch matte black shipping to U.S.? Um, in terms of the, the individual variants, have we had any slowdowns on that specific one? Yeah, we can talk about that. Great. Well, we just jumped it. So you said pro, matte black droppers? 19-inch pro 19 -inch. black dropper. Yeah, we do have some of those. We have, so I got to find it on here. Yeah, so uh, with uh, with our third plant, that's really where those are going to come online. We got 58 of those coming here about the middle of the month. I'll talk to you guys about container schedules, but our uh, the new plant is coming on and uh, a lot of what they're shipping, it's all pros. Uh, a lot of what is coming in the initial shipment is droppers, uh, 433 droppers out of 533. So if you've been waiting for a dropper, this is probably a good indication. Uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be working a lot of those off. And uh, yeah, if we've got, the, the Pro Pro 19 droppers in matte black, there's like 58 of the 23 droppers in matte black. There's well over 100. There, it's Everything is coming in, in in pretty large numbers. In fact, we've got of the 100 uppers, 91 of those are 23 inch Pro uh, upper matte blacks, which is a very popular unit. The other good news is, although the Sterlings are not coming from this plant, we did resolve the issue. I think we talked previously about the, the brake cover and uh, there's a little bit of a void in there. Uh, that's been resolved. We have the brake cover, so we're back, we're back at it building, uh, building sterlings. So uh, we'll get you your sterlings moving. I, uh, I do have some allocations for those uh, and those are gonna be, I think on container 16, 15, 16. So all those are coming. The, uh, the, the tough news is, well, the good news, let's start with Australia. So uh, Australia, you've cleared customs with your containers. So next thing up is going to be, uh, you're going to get a GST letter next. Uh, we'll send you all that information, remit payment, and then we will uh, we'll start sending those out. The, uh, that GST letter will probably go out tomorrow, I'm guessing, maybe Friday, but I'm, we're going to try and have that out tomorrow. As soon as you get that... Uh, the payment remitted, uh, we'll go ahead and, and package up your, your bike, or it's already packaged, we'll get it labeled up, we'll get it get it shipped to you. So good news for Australia, and that is a lot of bikes. Uh, 400 and, let me find my spot, 442 bikes out of, uh, actually a total of 456. There's gonna be 14 bikes left over in a lock status when we're done. We'll, we'll put those on a pallet later on. Those will ship at a less than container load shipment, but that will take us to 97% of all 
uh, Australia shipments fulfilled. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, we're very happy about that. Uh, let's see. So Europe. We are. We have two more container uh, container kits of, of baby makers at Customs. We're trying to clear those out, although they have plenty to build in Spain. Uh, what we call NL2, Netherlands 2, uh, fulfilling the EU. That's going, that is actually at the Netherlands and is going to start uh, getting labels printed. And those will start going out. They are also resolving the last of the NL1. We had... Uh, about 43 errors. We recovered most of those. I have one customers I need to get in, in touch with and talk to them about uh, what we're going to do about their bike because I don't have one in the near future to, to replenish them. So we'll offer them some alternatives. But all if, if you had a misshipment on NL1, your bike is coming back towards you. I have all of the uh, tracking numbers from, from the Netherlands. Uh, UK1, that's the first shipment. A lot of you uh, have gotten notifications on that. Uh, that will be that will be moving to that'll start moving and probably get to to the UK. Probably probably leave Spain Friday. Probably come in to the big web warehouse on Monday sometime. They'll unpack it, and then we will start uh, start shipping that those ones out. Also, there will be some other notifications coming with that. But, uh, and then we have NL3 coming, which is additional for, for the EU, and then UK2 will follow up. So we're gonna kind of probably ship two shipments to the, uh, to, uh, to the Netherlands for every one we, we ship to the UK because we got twice as many bikes to fulfill in the EU as we do in, in England. Although England is a big percentage of our entire group of what we have in Europe, it's still only about 35% of it. Sweet. And, yep. and just, a, just a note on EU and UK, in terms of regions, uh, that region, EU, UK, it's a little bit further behind than, than the rest of our major geographic locations, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Main reason for that was that six-week delay we had for that first container of parts coming in. That did slide things back a little bit, but we're, we're on track now, right. cooking, components coming in, bikes going out on a regular basis. And it's really just heating up now. Yep, that it is. Okay, uh, U.S. Canada. So uh, good news, bad news. So uh, container eleven, which was kind of long delayed. This is one. If I know people are complaining, they got uh, notifications in December. This was actually the container we were we were sending out notifications for in December. That is now at port. Uh, the bad news is they're estimating 10 to 14 days to, to clear the port right now. So uh, usually it's been five in the past, but if you do a little research, you'll find out the, the ports are all jammed. Shanghai going out, uh, all of the major ports in the world are, are jammed. Uh, there's actually a container shortage also. So that's the bad news. Uh, to go with that, unfortunately... So container 12 is supposed to come in 2.5. It moved uh, from 2.5 to 2.13. That was yesterday. Um, container 13 was supposed to come in on the 31st. It's been moved out to February 8th. And what's happening is the ships are on the water. They're actually slowing them down because they don't want them sitting just outside of port here. Uh, last week, we had a, a quite a storm, and they actually pushed a lot of ships out uh, far away, from the, uh, away from the port because they were all kind of congregated there waiting for a berth. Uh, they had 17-foot seas, and they moved them out to, yeah, because they don't want them banging yeah. into each other. So it was, it was kind, of a, kind of a mess. So, uh, so what they've done is because they, they don't have enough berths to accommodate all the ships that are parked out uh, outside the, the harbor, they've kind of told them, slow down, oh, don't man. get here so soon. Kind of like yeah. a, if you've flown, when they do a ground hold, they don't circle anymore, they just put you on a ground hold, they don't even take off. So they're, they've are they slowed these ships down, they don't want them uh, moving in and, and just congregating. Uh, so container 14, long delayed one, we just sent out notifications on that one, but that actually is, is still at port, We're trying to get that out of Shanghai. We are assured by our partners that the container 14, 15, and all of the three containers from uh, plant three are all going to be out here by the end of the month. So those should be here about the uh, about mid-February, and then hopefully that we can get them processed pretty quickly. But 
logistics on an international scale, it's, it's not fun. I'm not, I'm not having a good time here, guys. It's, whoa, uh, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Well, I'm having a Watch the attitude, here. Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like watching the news. Let's put it that way. We're trying to, we're trying to deal with it. It's, uh, it is a challenge, but... Um, Everybody, yeah, worldwide logistics. Good stuff. Very challenging at the moment, but Troy is doing an amazing job of making sure that we deal with the punches and get out as many bikes as possible. There's huge, huge delays going in and out of ports, but we're on top of it and moving a lot of bikes. We're trying to stay on top of it. Yeah, we're, we're doing it. Hell yeah. So I think you took them through the uh, where we're at. On, on um, not lines, quite or? not quite yet. I may, okay. may do that a bit later, but All I do right. have a few questions okay. for you through here. Let's just roll through. So any any questions specifically for Troy, we'll, we'll share with him now. Again, we are not able to answer specifically when order 514 or whatever order number is will arrive. We're doing our best to move as many as possible. We just can't, can't pinpoint dates at the moment. But um, any other questions logistics-wise, we will do our best. All right. Let's see. So, while you're somebody asked your... about Switzerland. Yes. Um, where are the Switzerland bikes sent from? They're sending. They're coming out of uh, out of uh, the Netherlands, also. Out of the Netherlands. So, yeah, the the non you know uh, common market countries or EU countries are still being fulfilled out of the Netherlands. So we've had shipments to both Switzerland and Norway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are still still running through there, and so we kind of put those in the same EU numbers. Great. Yep. All right. Somebody asked uh, if your estimate on the website shows March. Is that still accurate, or should we expect more delays? I'm from the U.S. Ordered in June. So again, they are estimates on, yeah, the, on estimates. the website. I, I mean, if you look, and I don't want to get anybody's hopes, you know, up unreasonably or anything like that. If you look at it, what we've gone through and done allocations for some of these bikes were were allocated through sales in say april of last year some of them are running all the way like to august it all depends on how many were ordered and how many we have coming in so some of the uh more unusual configurations we're going to we're going to ship stuff that was ordered in like august because the the quantity was fairly small there's some blue raspberry dropper mm -hmm. growth and, you know they built like 15 of them and we've got demand for 15 you yeah know, forever type of thing so so in that case it didn't make sense to make five or six just mm -hmm. build them all out and move them along and then uh, the other ones are building in the larger quantities and as we close out these smaller quantities we'll just get focused on on larger quantity the higher runners. So I did do a little bit of a review uh, with the Chinese factories and basically said, we went through and kind of reprioritized because I did see some that were kind of languishing and we weren't making the pace that we should have on those. So we went back and said, look, you need to reprioritize these models up to try and to try and close out and, and kind of work these off at a more reasonable rate. Some, somebody asked, and I know this is a tough question, when do you think all EU bikes will be delivered, according to you, Troy? I'm trying to figure out what's the worst case scenario for getting my baby maker. Well, that's, that's a tough question. <laughs> it all depends. Putting you on the spot. Putting me on the spot. So I don't want you to think that you're going to get the very last EU bike, but somebody's going to. Um, but the... If you, if you look at the order numbers, and again, it all depends on how many were ordered and the sequence in which we're building them. Like, again, in the U.S. right now, and I know we're talking about EU, uh, the Sterling droppers are, are languishing a bit because we had this, this brake cover issue. Now we're going to get those back, back going again. So those are, those are falling behind a bit. Where you're going to fall, like I said, we, we're, we're allocating orders all the way up to like order number like 8,000 type of thing when there's some orders that are still in, you know, below 1,000. And it all depends on how many were ordered and how unique they are. And it's it's really, it depends on which model you're actually, actually buying. I know that's a non-answer answer, but we have 48 different SKUs on these things, 48 different variants. It's very hard to say, well, you'll, you'll be here, you know, this will be here then, and this will be here, you know, 
not knowing your your particulars and and honestly i so we don't know we don't know we don't know i, I would love as to soon as possible an answer but uh -huh. i can't i can't individually update you know eight thousand orders it just i'm sorry there's just one of me and i'm trying to move we're trying to shovel coal mm -hmm. right now so i can't really pick diamonds great so yes yes seen um to get the vast majority of bikes out, you know, 90, 95% of those, it's gonna be over the next few months. EU, again, is a little bit behind our, our other major locations. Yeah. And then there's the low volume regions, uh, which will be after the Chinese New Year's holiday, once we start sending more of those out. But 95% of the bikes, almost all the bikes will be out over the next few months. So we are picking up steam for sure, yeah, and more and more bikes are going out. One last question for Troy yep. before we go over the uh, other non-logistics questions. Somebody asks, he said, this is Andrew. I live in Maryland, ordered two bikes in April. Haven't got them. What about the East Coast? I've ordered a Pro in Orange with the low bars and the Sterling. Is there any difference geographically um, sending a bike to the East no. Coast versus the West Coast? No, it's all, uh, we go in, in numeric order. So mm -hmm. I, I go from oldest order to newest order as I have bikes available. So when I have 15, you know, pro orange droppers, I, I sort all those out and we go from oldest to newest and we allocate those. So no one's literally looking at regions or anything like that because we're shipping by FedEx. So it really doesn't matter to us. We're not putting these on a pallet. There's no, you know, less than truckload type shipments going with these. They, they're going out individually through FedEx. So there's no reason for me to consolidate by, by region on these. Awesome. All right, Troy. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Yep. You're doing an amazing job. Uh, I don't know if everybody appreciates all the hard work you put into it. You're getting a big round of applause right uh, now. Thank Thanks you. again for all the, all the answers. All right. Appreciate it, Troy. Else. That's good. Thank you. If your question has not been answered yet, not to fear, I'll be, uh, I'll be going back through the comments. Any of the ones that weren't uh, specifically for Troy, I'll be picking those up now, and then we will have another guest in just a few minutes. So we'll try and slam through these. Where were we? Yasim, hi, Rob. Just a big thank you because you've stepped up the communication significantly lately. Still very impatient to get my baby maker in Paris, but I appreciate the efforts. Thank you so much, Yasim. That really means a lot, a lot to me. It was... Crazy, crazy busy the past couple months, but uh, we've really put an effort to make making sure you guys are more informed, more videos, more lives. I love doing this stuff. It does take a, a tremendous amount of time, but now that we're on top of production, on top of logistics, it's really just about waiting for components and uh, and bikes to be delivered. I I do commit more time to making sure you guys have somebody to talk to. Martin asks, will the baby maker have more speed or faster in the future, more than 28 miles per hour? Martin, no plans on that at the moment. That is a, it's the legal limit for a class three e-bike in the U.S., which does have one of, some of the most lenient e-bike laws in the U.S. So after 28 miles per hour, it's, it's no longer a street legal class three e-bike. So at the moment, we don't have plans to surpass that with the baby maker. We do have some other models which are not for use on roads, for off-road use only. That can go 40 plus miles per hour, the Blade 2.0 specifically for off-road use. And our mechanic, Jason, uh, he tells me his his top speed on that is 54 miles an hour on a flat. But he, uh, I think he's tweaked it a little bit. Uh, Kenneth asks, is there a slightly larger, easier to read display out there somewhere? There's many types of displays, ones that are compatible with the baby maker. That's something we'll have to look into, Kenneth, if that's uh, highly requested by, by yourself and other people. It's certainly something we will want to look into because we want to build you the best bikes and make you happy. Desmond, hi, Rob. Can you comment on the issue raised on the FLX Facebook page where owners come on in? Hey, I'll come back to that question, Desmond, in a minute. We do have a new guest on the show, very first time on a live. Pull right on up to that microphone so you can be in focus. And why don't you raise your seat a little bit? Oh, it's like small. 
Hey, everybody, this, why, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Rachel. I'm helping out with customer support now, but also doing some graphic design. Hell yeah. And how did you, how did you get into the FLX company? What brought you here? <laughs> um, well, I started off as an intern on Miles and then helped with the product launch for the Phantom. And then from there, just kind of transitioned into FLX and helping out with customer support. Awesome. Do you mind getting a little closer to the microphone? So you're in focus. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> and what is, what is Miles so for the people who don't know? So Miles is the sister company to FLX, and we do more of the uh, electric skateboards rather than the electric bikes. Yeah, so Rachel came in on an internship uh, through Miles, did, put in her three, three <laughs> months there, and then there was a big need for more support staff, and she volunteered, filled the void, and joined us full-time working at FLX. What's a typical day look like for you? A whole lot of Zenda. So we get a bunch of customer emails. So our main priority is going through all the emails that we get on a daily basis and touching base with everyone that needs help with their orders or just mechanic issues, all that fun stuff. And then from there, I just kind of assist where I'm needed. What's what's the most common question you get? I already know it. I think everybody <laughs> when, knows when's it. When's my baby maker coming? <laughs> Is it, and that, that's a challenging one. You know, we wish we could give you guys an exact date of when your bike will arrive. Unfortunately, it's impossible. There's too many variables in the shipping and uh, delivery process to say exactly when it will come. So we're doing our best. We know we can do better. And we're constantly thinking of ways that we can communicate better. Uh, that's why Rachel's here to, uh, to do her best to give you guys the answers that, that you want. Any, um, how, many, how many ticks do you close out in a typical week? Uh, I think last week I did like 130. 130. Yeah. Rachel, Maybe a little bit more. she's setting ticket records in her <laughs> first couple weeks on the job here. Let's see if there's any any questions. I'm going to send some your way. Let's see. Andy says, hello, Rachel. Hi, Andy. Jacob asked, do you guys sell batteries for the original FLX trail? Mine went bad. I believe we do. We have them on the website right now. I don't know if they're stock at the moment. Yes, we do sell the batteries on the website. I also don't know if they're in yeah. stock, but if you go to our website, flx.bike, hit that components tab and check out the battery section, you'll be able to find the one for your bike. And hopefully... It will be in stock. We do have, I think, pretty much every battery in stock, like loads of batteries. I think so. Last batteries. time I checked, I, I saw that all the batteries in stock, but I haven't checked since, I think, Friday. Awesome. Let's see. Any other questions? No specific questions for you. So <laughs> what is the uh, best and worst parts of your day uh, doing your job? Um, or I most challenging parts? I think the most challenging part is just trying to give you guys specifics on your orders because I know it's frustrating to have to wait for your order to come in and it is really frustrating for us as well because we want nothing more than for you guys to receive your bikes and we look forward to seeing you posting on Instagram or making videos with your baby makers like that's really exciting for us so it is kind of disappointing when we can't give you exact information that you're looking for. Okay best yeah. part of the job. Uh, best part of the job? Uh, I think just there are like a few like little tokens from customers where they're just like they give a shout out to like, hey, thank you so much for answering our questions. Like it was, that was super helpful. Like you guys are doing a great job and that's always nice to hear because it is hard to just get like a bunch of slurry of messages being like, I'm sorry, I can't give you more information. Like I, this is our best estimate when you'll get your order. And I know it's always hard to hear that from us, but it is nice when you guys give us a little nod of being like, you guys are doing a great job. Mm hmm. Rachel certainly has one of the hardest jobs here because it's it's only people who do have issues. Maybe it's uh, something with the bike that's broken, need help, or waiting on the bike, need an answer, etc. It's not when people have a great experience and the bike works perfectly, everything's on time. Nobody nobody reaches out to support to say that. So uh, really, just get hit get hit with all that stuff and don't get to see all the fun stuff that the rest of the team gets to see. So. Any, any chance you do get to talk to Rachel, please give her a big, a big thank you for her hard work. She really does put her heart into it, and she's doing a great job. Thanks. Thank you so much, Rachel, for coming on the live. Of course. We're proud of you.
All right, I believe we have five minutes until the next guest on the live. So I'll, I'll go back through those questions. Okay, Desmond, I didn't forget about your question. You did ask, um, can you comment on the issue raised on the FLX Facebook page where owners have experienced the rear wheel axle on the baby maker coming out of alignment at the dropouts when braking hard? Desmond, I, I have not heard of that issue, but uh, that does sound pretty serious. So that's something we certainly want to look into. If that's happened to you, please get in touch with our support department, support at flx.bike, send any videos or photos that you can, especially if it's a um, you know hardware, hardware issue, something that uh, needs to be addressed. We certainly want to know about it. Otherwise, it could be could be that something is loose or that the belt is not tightened properly. Um, that would be my first guess, but I really want to see that before I comment on it more. You know, uh, bikes for Portugal those those are going out from our Spanish facility uh, with the rest of the EU bikes. So again, I can't tell you exactly when yours will arrive, but. We're making big progress there. More and more bikes are going out over the coming weeks and months. Kenneth, have you tried the Egg Rider Bluetooth enabled display with the Baby Maker Pro? No, I have not uh, tried it. I'm the kind of rider, I don't even look at the display. I literally, I turn it on, I set it to five and I just jam, I go. I don't look at really how far I've gone every once in a while, I'll check the check the speed, but I just go as fast as I can <laughs> for as long as I want and, uh, and I go home. So I'm, I'm not the super connected type. I understand a lot of folks want to get uh, a load more analytic data, et cetera. So I haven't looked into it to, to make a long story short, but if it works, please, uh, please share some photos and videos in that Facebook group. Anthony Andrews says, hey, Rob, day one baby maker backer here. Just wanted to check in and say, I love my baby maker. And anyone who has purchased one will not regret it. So worth the wait. Absolutely, Anthony. Thank you so much for that. It is an agonizing wait for sure for everybody who has not received it, but it will be well worth it. I'm really glad you're enjoying it and ride safe out there. Mark, a uh, question about the specific delivery. So, Mark, your uh, order number, by the way, 98130, just so there's no confusion there, this is a very common question. If you ordered on the FLX website, which has order numbers starting in the 90,000s, 90,000, whereas Indiegogo orders started in the ones. So for anybody who did order on our website and you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm 90,000 or 100,000 and they're only on the... 3,000 orders. That's that's not true at all. We're going by order date. Those order numbers are not uh, not consistent. So 90,000 is one system. One is another system. And we just go by order date. On that same note, if you do see somebody in the 90,000s receiving their order and you're only 6,000, keep in mind that you're on Indiegogo. They're on our website. Completely different numbering system. Andy, uh, same same thing, asking a uh, specific delivery date. Unfortunately, I, I can't provide that. Most of these bikes will be delivered over the next few months, uh, pretty much all the, all the pre-orders. So please hang tight. We will keep you updated. When it does ship and get in a container, you will get a shipping notification from us. Uh, Dave asks when UK deliveries will arrive. The first UK bikes have gone out. I believe Troy just mentioned that. So in the EU, we do have two distribution centers, one in Europe and then one in the UK. So bikes specific for, specifically for the UK go to a UK fulfillment center. So we kind of alternate, send one container out to the UK, one to the EU, back and forth. There are uh, about twice as many bike orders in the EU versus the UK. So 
we send a little bit more to the EU or more frequent containers and then to the UK. If a bike is on a container, have people been notified about shipping? So if we haven't been notified about shipping, does that mean they're still in the factory? Alicia, uh, that's, that's correct. We do have a, a new guest coming in. But uh, once it's on the container, within the next few days, our logistics team is sending out shipping notifications. So if you have not got it yet, that means it probably has not been loaded up yet. But once it is, you will get that notification. All right, welcoming the next guest. Big round of applause. By popular demand, Sarah is here. And do you mind scooting up a little bit yes. so that you're in focus? Perfect. I'm stuck in a rut. Yep. I got all these holes on my on my office floor. Uh, what it, what is your answer? So someone Alicia's asking about the no notifications. So yep. we don't just because you don't have notification does not mean that it isn't in a container. We we wait till it's about ten days, fifteen days out, and that's when we actually uh, send out the address got notification. It. So again, the container eleven was kind of an example that it just came in. We thought we we're going to have it in December. Got so it. We sent those out. People are like, okay, what happened? Why am I getting it? So so there's just for example, on the containers on the water right now in the U.S., I have five hundred twenty-seven bikes allocated that their notifications have not gone out yet. Uh, no, yeah, so, so those are still coming. So there is hope, okay. don't worry. Just because it's on the water and in a container doesn't mean people have been notified. Gotcha. Doesn't mean your, your bike isn't built. It very well could be. Got it. Sweet. Okay. Let me let me summarize that. that. Thank you, Troy. All right. Troy, Troy came in to slap me because I got it wrong. The um, shipping notifications, he's actually hanging off until they're about 10 days out from port, et cetera. So... People don't get too anxious to send the shipping notifications. So we do have three containers coming out. Those notifications have not been sent. Those are for the U.S. All right. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. To the live. How's it going, guys? Thank you for joining. Yes. Um, many people have been asking to have you on the live. You're one of our most central members of the team, our writer support manager. And uh, let's just go through it. What, you know, what are some common questions you've been getting besides um, when is my bike arriving? Oh, I think that's the most common one right now. Um, we've had a lot of questions about logistics, basically what Troy just asked, um, what the emails mean. So we just went over that as well. Um, I think that's basically been it. Thankfully, rider support has been a little bit quiet recently. So the last couple of days I've been um, putting my focus towards adding more information to our website so it's more accessible so people can just find it there. But yeah. Things have been a little bit quiet. It's kind of worrying me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chris asked, did I miss Sarah yet? Here you are. Oh, hi. Let's see. Yeah, I was out last week. We were filming, so I wasn't able to join the live last week. And then I took a couple of days off for my birthday. Chris says, hi, Sarah. Nice to see you again. Hi, Chris. Vince, I'm concerned seeing Oz people getting notifications when I'm order number 75 and I just got a matte black pro, but no notification at all. What can people do if uh, they might be missing an email from us? So Vince, it's really important to check your spam folder. A lot of times uh, the emails go there and they're missed. Um, so that's the first thing that I would do. And besides that, it could be just your configuration isn't quite ready to ship yet. So just keep on keeping an eye out too. A lot of the, um, times what I tell people to do is you can add our um, email to your contact list and that will avoid those emails going to your spam folder. So you should add support at flx.bike to your contact list and also shipping at flx.bike. And so that way when those shipping emails do come in, it won't go to your junk folder. Totally. Vince, I would expect that order number 75, I would I would think that that would have shipped. Again, there's a possibility that, you know, it's a unique configuration, but we have shipped 97% of the Australian orders. So it would be my best guess that yours should be in there. Certainly check your spam folder. And also a common issue is people uh, have misspelled their emails when they signed up for oh, Indiegogo yeah. or used a different email address. Make sure the email address on your Indiegogo where you place the order matches the email that you're checking. Mm. 
Mahalo asked about order numbers. He's got an Indiegogo order number of uh, approximately 2,000. Mm -hmm. Can you say at what number you're at currently shipping for Germany? Again, it's, it's kind of all, it's kind of varied um, and also by region. In the EU, we've, we've done, we're in the first few hundred bikes out for the EU, so we're still getting through there. I don't know exactly what order numbers that entails. Troy would have a better answer for that, which he'll probably come in during the show to, to answer that because he watches these. But um, it is mixed based on availability of SKUs as well. Yeah, so we are doing our best to go by order number, but that's based on availability because, you know, we're trying to get them all out as quickly as we can. So if, you know, your bike isn't available to ship at that time, we move on to the next order number. Awesome. All right, Sarah, there, there aren't too many questions directed just at you yet. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself for the people who haven't got the chance to meet you yet. Okay. Fun um, fact. Fun fact. Okay. Um, I have been with FLX for almost three years now. Probably can say I've been here the longest out of everyone besides Rob. Um, I started here back when we first started getting big, I guess you could say. There was no office chairs. When I first came in for my interview, I was a little bit scared to come back because it looked like a <laughs> construction site. When I walked into our shop and I was like, this seems super sketchy. But I'm glad I decided to go in anyways. I had a very good interview, but it was a very casual conversation with Rob and I got the job the next day. And I'm really, really happy that I accepted it because I just kind of went on on a whim. Um, besides that, fun facts. Um, I'm from Alaska. A lot of people think that's really cool. Um, I'm from a family of 13, which a lot of people think that's cool too. <laughs> I have seven brothers and five sisters. Awesome. We've got an encore. Troy? Order 75 is in the Australian containers. Okay. Um, who was that? I, we, 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 I think we messed up on the, on the emails. It, or check your spam folder, but it, I just looked and it, it is definitely in the Australian containers. It's, it's allocated. That was like Vince, is that his name? Uh, yeah, I think it was Vince. I lost it already. Order number 75 in Australia. Your bike is in the container. We're double-checking on the emails that went out just to make sure um, everything went out as planned. But it is in there. Your bike sh has just cleared customs, and you should be receiving a GST email from us very soon. <clears throat> that was a very easy decision for us, Sarah, to bring you on board. One of the most hardest working people that's ever been through this company. She's always at all hours of the night sending through texts and stuff of questions she, she sees in the Facebook groups, et cetera. Like, hey, how can we resolve this? She really, really wants the best for you guys, really wants to handle any, any issues that come up and make sure FLX riders are the happiest riders on the planet. Yeah, my um, my significant other actually confiscated my laptop the other day because he got annoyed with me that I wouldn't stop working. He was like, you're done, you're done, and he took away my laptop. No way. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Sarah, was the bike you assembled recently yours? How come you got the bike first before us? I wish it was mine. I'm still waiting for my bike. I um, Yeah, my bike hasn't come in yet. That was a bike for one of our other people in our office. No, it wasn't mine. I thought about taking it though. Ray, what happened to my eye? <laughs> oh, I fought a FedEx driver. Just kidding, I didn't fight a FedEx driver. All right, Vince, Vince got the message, awesome. Uh-oh, Yassine says, Troy knows where the bikes are in the containers, watch out for upcoming, where's my bike questions? Chris says, yeah, you're great, Sarah. Thank you, Chris. Daniel said he's willing to change colors if it means he'll get it faster. Is that something that we are doing? No. So normally we don't change orders after 10 days. Um, and the reason for that is after those 10 days, um, your order is put into a master spreadsheet and that's sent to our factory. So it's put in like a count and a list of bikes. So on very rare occasions, we'll be able to adjust it, but normally we can't. And it definitely won't make it any quicker because then it sets you back in line if it is changed. If anything, it would make it take longer. Awesome. Pat says, yes, Sarah does a great job. Oh, thank you, Pat. Absolutely. I think I've helped him with one of, I think he has a couple of other, other models. Awesome. What can, um, what can people do to make your life easier? Is there anything that our writers can do to make your job easier? 
Um, well, we do have an awesome new system. So I know I've talked about it before. We have a new writer support system called Zendesk and we have um, a lot of really, really great informative um, articles on our website that have, I would say maybe 98% of the questions that are asked you know, through our writer support system. So if you guys wanna look through our FAQ, that would be really cool. We'll probably cut our emails in half. But I do love talking to you guys, so I'm not going to complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, there's no other questions, Sarah. Thank you so much for, for coming on. Oh, oh I, Robert, I did one. have a question for you. What is it? So I was listening to you talk to Rachel earlier, and you asked her something. You asked her what was the best and worst part of her day. So okay. you're the most positive person I know, so I want you to answer that question. Ooh, for me. Sarah's putting me on the spot now. <laughs> I don't know how to answer these. I'm usually the one asking the hard questions. Best and worst part of my day. The best part is, is getting up early and just crushing it. I love waking up. I, I do 5 a.m. and I just go about my day. I could put in three hours before everybody gets here, which is, which is awesome. Um, there's a lot to do. We've got big goals as a company, also personally as well. So there's nothing I love more than just working on my goals and crushing those. The worst part of the day is all the annoying things that you have to do. Like, I hate eating. I don't want to eat. Gosh, I don't want to, I don't like going to the bathroom, do the laundry, cooking, tying my shoes. I don't wear any shoes with laces. Look at this. Shoe off. I can vouch for that. Shoe never on. Has laces. Never do laces. Because if you add up all the time you spend tying your shoes over a year, that's like six hours a year you spend. That's a whole work day over your lifetime that's like 90 days oh think about it never thought of it that way that's a lot of time you save <laughs> a lot more you can accomplish all right sarah interesting i'm gonna give you a big round of applause here thank you so much for coming on and keep up the good work can you ask ben to come in at 255 please yes. thank you All right. Soldiers in your cup. Still in focus here. Okay, uh, gonna try and catch up on the questions here and then we have one final guest coming in in eight minutes. Okay, uh, Kex said, 23-inch Sterling upper arrived two weeks ago in Germany, and the bike is super nice. In level five, I only get approximately 25 kilometers on flat ground out of one battery charge with 85 kilogram load. The battery still shows two bars, but the assistance stops. Any advice? So, Kex, uh, great question there. There are some settings in the display that we may want to check on that um, to adjust just how that battery reading is displayed. When it does cut out, that your battery is out, so it's not like you still have battery and it's just stopping. It's probably just the display needs to be calibrated, that battery level. 25 kilometers for an 85 kilogram rider. Uh, that's, that's not too shabby. Our real world estimates um, are between 12 and 12 and 20 miles depending on how much you weigh, uh, and that's in level five if you're just, you know, giving it everything you got. So that's pretty, that's a pretty standard range. That's about 15 miles, 25 kilometers. And uh, if you put it in lower levels, you'll certainly get further range. If you also put more pedal effort in, you'll get further range. If you reduce your weight, um, so the amount of stuff that you're wearing, et cetera, that will increase your range. Also increasing the tire pressure can increase your range as well. Yasin says, I really did put you on the spot there. Okay, never mind. I know you're doing your best and I appreciate it. Michael says, sorry for all the bad press FLX is getting online. They sound so ignorant when the when they just start blasting you and your crew for things that are out of your control. Michael, it's okay. I, you know, we get it. 
we we did have aggressive delivery estimates and a lot of the bikes are ending up past those so that's on us um it's totally our responsibility we're doing our best we will make it right we will get through it and we will deliver every single bike we do appreciate your positive attitude and and the uh vote of confidence we're gonna do it What do you mean by droppers? Dropper is the variant with the dropper bars. So that's, you know, your standard aero bars like you see on a road bike versus the bullhorn bars, which are up like this. So you have a traditional bicycle riding stance versus the lower. That's a drop bar when it goes down. Yasin says, another important point, Rob. Big props for hiring Troy. I think we all love the precision, the hard work, and the transparency. Well done. Great addition. Totally, Yassin. Thank you so much for that. Troy is doing an amazing job. He really puts his heart into it. He's working late hours in the night uh, in Excel spreadsheets, something that if I was doing that, I'd, I'd shoot myself. It's a really tough job. I'd go, I'd go very dizzy very soon, probably go blind. I can't manage that many cells. But Troy's, Troy's got all these displays with every rider there, just making sure that we touch each one and that we do an accurate Precise job. Mike said, I'm missing the updates and information as I can't access our FLX group. I've asked this to be sorted many times with no change. When can I expect this to be resolved and I'm able to view our group? Mike, please shoot us a, an email to support at flx.bike. We do send out all the updates on Indiegogo, uh, so they should go to your email if you ordered there, or you could check Indiegogo. That's where all the official updates go. Also, this YouTube Live. Again, um, that group was moderated by volunteers who were Baby Maker owners previously. I understand not everybody was, was super happy with how it was moderated before uh, FLX moderators have taken over that now, and uh, it's, a, you know, it's an open place to share information, but... That's something that, that we'll have to look into, Mike. Um, Brian Cashton says, I didn't hear anything about Bullhorn updates. Nothing out of the ordinary there, Brian. Both Bullhorn and Dropper bars are being built and shipped on a regular basis. There's no, there's no delay on Bullhorn bikes whatsoever. Everything's business as usual. Eugene, please do R&D on adding an external water bottle type battery to extend range. Thanks for the suggestion, Eugene. You're not the only one to suggest that, so appreciate it. Mark, yeah, Rob, you sold me on the bike, so greatly appreciate the live feeds. Thanks, Mark. No problem, Mark. I'm, I'm glad you're able to tune in and chat with me today. Danny said, do the EU bike shipping now have the new display? Danny, I can't tell you for sure on that. I believe the first shipment of EU bikes most likely had the original display because they went out about the same time as those first thousand or so bikes with the original display. The following containers most likely had the newer display. I can't tell you for certain, though, exactly where that cutoff is and how many of those have been used. Will there be any upgrades to the Baby Maker like extended battery? Gabriel, uh, at, the, at the moment, we haven't got anything planned yet. Um, our focus is on delivering all of the Baby Maker orders right now. Big, big priority at the moment. But when we do have updates, you can expect to see them on our social media and our emails as well. Andy says, so just keep waiting and be patient is the key. Uh, yes, I wish I could tell you more than that. Being patient is, uh, is really, the, I think, the best way to get through this. It's an agonizing wait if, if that's what you focus on. It will be well worth it. But if you get outside, enjoy, enjoy the beautiful weather, you know, think about other things and stuff, it can make the wait a lot easier. For me, whenever I'm waiting to take a trip or waiting on something to arrive, I get it. I've, I waited a few weeks for it was a, a drone or some photography equipment to arrive, and it was bugging the hell out of me. Until I went and focused on something else, got to the gym, started working on a, on a hobby, and that really helped that weight pass so much faster. 
John Carlo, I'm starting to believe you called it baby maker because babies require a gestation period and making us all wait for our babies. Um, not exactly why we called it the baby maker, but uh, considering the, the delivery times and the back order times, that is becoming more and more true. Phil asks, I'm sorry, FLX and Rob, but I truly feel you are picking and choosing the distribution of what is available, but it's not what you promised originally. Um, Phil, I, I, I get why you would feel that way because there, there are some variances in which numbers are going out. That's certainly not what we're doing. We're not going through the list and picking, picking people we don't like and saying you don't get your bike or certain people have said good things and you get it first. Not at all. It's really just how many bikes we've built in what configuration, who were the first people to order those bikes in that location, and we send them out that way. There's variances based on what bike it was and also where it is going. But aside from that, it is all in first come, first serve order. We're not picking and choosing whatsoever. All right, we do have a new guest. Big round of applause for Ben Cedre. Hey, guys. How we doing? Can you? All right, here you go. All right. And you're in focus. Awesome. So Ben, ben is a all-around renaissance man. He handles uh, so many things in the office. He came in. What was your job originally? Uh, I, I, it was a content creator about three and a half years ago. That's what I signed on to do. And, <laughs> in, what, in what occupies most of your day now? Oh, just everything from logistics, customer service, just everything all across the, the board. Uh, my hands are in a bunch of different places at once, so... Um, while I'm an expert at nothing, I feel like I'm pretty good at everything. So that's kind of where I am right now. So again, Ben came on to, to do content and when we were getting pummeled and really had a lot of bikes to deliver, he completely stepped it up, got on top of logistics. We had an interim period where we had no supply chain manager and Ben filled in for that role, did an amazing job. You know, he was here every night till 10 PM for a couple of weeks in a row just putting in hours. I'm like trying to go to bed. Like, Ben, why are you still at the office? But he absolutely <laughs> kills it, and he's a very important member of our management team here. So um, let's see. Any questions for Ben? If not, we'll just have a chat. I'll just go back through to where we were. Okay. Have you considered putting huge battery shipment on the water and air freighting bikes as ready for assembly stateside to speed delivery? W. Uh, uh, Craig, I can jump on that. Um, that's almost something that we we wouldn't even consider. Air shipping is exponentially more expensive, regardless of whether that bike has a battery or it doesn't. Even if we were to take it out, the box dimensions would still be the same. So anytime you put something on the airplane, not only is weight an important factor, but you know total volume also plays a huge role. So if we were to do that, um, you know, it would end up costing more to ship one bike than it would for you to purchase the thing uh, in general. So, yeah, that cost of that air shipping per bike with the battery out, and plus we have to assemble it again, uh, almost as much as the entire cost yeah. of the bike. Okay, Chris, don't worry, we already know the answer to where my bike is. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Nuno says the blade has been perfect. If it's full suspension, you would like that roll off of. That's the one thing we've actually been playing around with is where can we take the blade next? Um, while we haven't made any decisions, there's a lot to consider that, you know, roll off speed hub uses um, a belt driven technology, which makes it harder to do a full suspension thing. So while we don't have any answers for that yet, know that we are exploring options you know, for, for later production runs of the blade. I'm just sifting through because a lot of these questions were answered while Sarah was in here. I'm all over the place with the comments today. Sorry, guys. Okay, so when asked on the website, there's the Baby Maker Pro and Baby Maker Pro. What's the difference? Um, I'm not sure. I'll actually err on. A, a Ron, I'm going to look into that for you. Uh, they're both the same. If it says Pro next to it, it's going to be the same bike. 
Uh, that might just be a typo, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. I'll go ahead and take a look at it after this live. Okay, a couple folks said sarcastically, thank you for not <laughs> addressing my question. Again, when, uh, when we have guests in here, I'm looking for the questions that are relevant to those guests. So Phil, I have answered your question now. We did get a chance to catch up and do that. If your question has been missed, I will get to it. I promise. Um, I'm not trying to ignore any questions. We're just picking the ones relevant to the guests we have at the time. Any updates on the Canadian orders? Um, so as far as that goes, uh, Troy's definitely the best person to know about that. But um, what I do know is that as of yesterday, the uh, address confirmations have been sent out for both um, for both of those shipments that are coming in. Um, there was a delay in one of them. Uh, fortunately, it has not hit the water yet, but we are looking to fulfill those Canada uh, orders as soon as we can, and we'll be sure to keep you posted on that. Where are we? Have any delivers happened to UK yet? I think we've shipped bikes to the UK, but haven't. Been yeah, so yet. so no, nothing has been distributed in the UK. We have sent a shipment there. Um, Troy is working on a few documents to to prepare for you know the. The distribution of them, um, but UK will be will most likely be the next country that will have baby makers landing on their doorstep. Uh, hopefully, by next Tuesday's update, we will have a concise answer for you uh, for for all of you in the United Kingdom. Awesome, Chris says, "Good to see you again, Ben. How are you, Chris? I've been doing good, man. Uh, started yoga, doing some breathing exercises." <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really doing well. What, what's been really cool the past few weeks is, you know, as we've hit, you know, basically the 50% threshold of, you know, baby makers made, um, we're really starting to see more people out on their bikes. Uh, we're getting those user videos. We're seeing people posting and that was always our end game here is to, you know, deliver a bike that everybody loves. So finally we're seeing it come to fruition. I know there's still so many of you waiting uh, and patiently doing so, and we thank you for that. But you know, in the last week or two, I've really had a boost to my spirits, and it's because of you guys and uh, all the positive feedback we're getting from those riders who have their bikes. And we hope to have you on their team as soon as we can. Daniel says, "How to do a potential color swap? Extra weight is not an issue." Um, it, that's going to be very difficult as. Um, we we place build orders, you know, sequentially. So every few weeks, as baby maker, makers are ordered, we then uh, or baby makers are purchased by you guys. We then place an order at the factory. Depending on where you are, there may be something we can do. However, it's highly unlikely. I would reach out to support at flx.bike with your question or concern. Um, they're much more able to tell you exactly where you stand because it's going to be a case by case basis. However, I will say right now it is unlikely you can swap your color at this point in time. All right, Ben. Final question: Was the baby maker designed in the USA and made in China? Question mark. Uh, <clears throat> that depends. Uh, depends on a lot of things. Uh, right now we have a factory in Spain, so I guess the second part of your question is sort of. Um, they are assembled in China as well as uh, this new uh, factory we have in Spain. Um, our designers, however, uh, were in various different countries. You know, we had the import from headquarters here in San Diego. Uh, we have a designer in where? Where is Tim located? Tim's in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, as well as we have people on the ground floor in the factory uh, doing the physical assembly and then communicating with all three of us so that we could then refine the designs from there. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we also got 20 prototypes way back when, where we did all the stress tests and that sort of thing. So it really was a very collaborative effort um, throughout various different levels uh, within the company. So made in Spain and, and China, designed everywhere. Awesome. All right, Ben, thank you so much for coming on. You're doing an amazing job, and we'll see you next week. Hopefully. Awesome, guys. Take care. All right, that's the final guest for the show. We are running a bit over time here. 
Uh, we were scheduled to go till 3 p.m. So I'm going to run back through the questions, come through them, anything that we missed, because I did pick and choose questions here to make sure they were relevant to the folks we had on the live. The more challenging ones, I will address them one by one here. We'll fire through them and then wrap this live up. Again, thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Let's do a lightning round of questions and get back to work. Let me fix the focus here real quick on the camera. All right, in focus. Give me a second, too, to find where we were in the, uh, in the questions before Ben came in. It was Phil S.'s question. Okay, we had that. Craig W. Ben got that. A. Raman asked how many question how many bikes have been ordered for the uk i don't have the exact number for that i'm sorry i believe it's it's close to 1000 give or take a th give or take a thousand it's in that magnitude a thousand to, to 1500 or so i'm i'm guessing so don't quote me on it uh blog asks a sense of real world range that people are getting with their baby makers Yes, I mentioned that previously. I'm not sure if you asked before then, but uh, common range, if you're in the top level of pedal assist, level five, you get between 12 to 20 miles or so. If you are cognizant of it or you're a more fit rider, you can certainly get more than that. And if you put it in a lower level of assist, we do have some folks that have got over 50 miles per charge in that you certainly, you know, you got to baby it to do that, but it is possible if you take it out of pedal assist, it's a bike, so you can get, you know, unlimited range without pedal assist. But with pedal assist, you know, 50 is a, it's a very optimistic number based on baby and that thing and being in the lower levels and being fit in optimal conditions. Real world range, 12 to 20 is, uh, is pretty reasonable for, for almost all riders. Okay, now we're going through all the questions when Sarah was here. We're getting caught up, guys. If you're asking questions now, I, I should be there in the next five to 10 minutes to the end of this list. Shouldn't there be a swap for the baby maker name on the website? Hey, hey Ron, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Tom, what is the status of the hoods for Sterlings? Tom, that has been resolved. We will post an update to that in next week's production update. But the Sterling hoods, uh, they are they are back. We've got new hoods that are that are perfect. So Sterling, all Sterling variants are back in production, as well as the box, the 23-inch box. We mentioned in yesterday's production update, we had an issue with the box. We've got the new boxes in now. So both items have been resolved. We get hit with challenges almost every day, but we do get through them. You know, anytime something comes up, that's the whole reason our company exists is to take those challenges, overcome them, and continue building you the best bikes. Aaron asked, please, if you can make a video of how to make the Mile per hour move from 15 to 25 miles per hour. I know that on the Facebook group there's info, but if you could please put a vid of how to make it fast for UK as well. Um, that's something we we can't do. Um, as you know, the, there are legal limits in the EU, UK, so we can't recommend you uh, riding outside of what is what is legal for your bike. There are there is a lot of information in the official. FLX Baby Maker Owners Group, where people are sharing information on how to tune it, et cetera, which we can't condone because you want to follow your local regulations, but you can find that information in there. 
deliveries to Australia, Kelvin, uh, 97% have been uh, shipped and have just cleared customs. And the GST emails will be going out over the next few days. And then all of those bikes will be delivered over the coming weeks. That's 97% of all Australian orders. So effectively, all Australian pre-orders have been shipped and will be delivered over the next couple weeks. Uh, Cavett asks, what about a timeline on being able to buy a new style display from you, or can you find us a source for us to buy them in the meantime? We do have some new displays. We've been, uh, we haven't put them on the site, I believe, because we wanted to hold, hold them for people who do, uh, have broken displays, et cetera, who crash people who really need them because they don't have displays. Uh, there is a bit of shortage there, but we're working on getting more of those. Once we have more in stock, they will be on the website. I'd expect that should be within the next four to eight weeks. Twenty-three standard Sterling Bullhorn for the Netherlands. Uh, Lester, all variants have been shipped in the EU and also in the UK. There's no one variant that's not shipping. So, no matter what your variant is. If you're in the EU, you know, those, those have been shipping and will continue to ship over the coming months. Mark, I've been riding my old fixie while I wait, getting ready. Awesome. You're going to be, you're going to be super fit by the time it gets there. Pushing, pushing a fixie is tough. And when it gets there, I'm sure you're going to get awesome range and speed. Tama says, very wrong estimation. Bought in May, still have no bike. Hey, I, I totally understand you're right about that. We estimated the shipping time based on everything we knew at the time. And what we didn't know is that the entire bike industry would completely explode uh, with COVID. And even our suppliers, you know, our estimates were based on what all of our suppliers and vendors told us we can deliver based on these timelines. Unfortunately, even the suppliers had the exact same issue that we had where the suppliers, so example, the brake manufacturers, where they get hoses, where they get brake pads, where they get their stuff CNC'd. They had the same exact issue where they can't get their component. So it just kind of compiled into this situation where not only us, but every single bike manufacturer around the world is scrambling to get components, having delays on components. And we're all doing the absolute best we can. And we've shipped, we're, we're about the halfway point now in terms of all the bikes delivered. So apologies that our estimates were off. Again, they were estimates for that reason because there's a lot of variables like that that we just can't anticipate. That's what happened. We do offer a delivery guarantee. We are absolutely going to deliver your bike. Unfortunately, not exactly when we estimated, but it will be well worth the wait. Dan says, why have I got three different stories from FLX about my Sterling Pro 23-inch order on day one or my black 23-inch Pro ordered also on day one. Are you saying you haven't even passed order 665 or 672? Dan, it kind of depends on where you are. I'm not sure where you are at geographically. If you're in the U.S., we should be pretty much past, past those numbers unless there's a certain variant that's uh, been slower or had a shortage. But uh, in terms of the different stories, you know, we are, we are a small team doing the absolute best we can Everybody's given the best of the information they know at the time. And when things change, the uh, information that we're able to give you changes as well. Patrick ordered 98564 Baby Maker Black on Black. Super pumped. Can't wait for that shipping notification. Thanks, Rob and FLX team. Awesome, Patrick. We can't wait to get you that shipping notification and even more so the bike. It's going to be well worth the wait. I almost lost my spot there. Phil, thank you for answering. I never thought you picked and choose per order, but rather by region to put out fires. Thank you, Phil. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not trying to, to put out fires and just picking, uh, picking a, a region to ship to and sacrificing the others. It's really a concerted effort where we're trying to ship as many bikes to as many places all at one time. We did focus the majority of our efforts, especially in the beginning, on the locations where we have the most orders. So that's the U.S., Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. That makes up 90% of our orders. The 
remaining 10% low volume locations are places where we have to do individual shipments. So it's the almost the same amount of effort to ship one bike to one country as, as it is to ship 200 bikes to one country. So if you were us, I'm sure you would make the same decision and ship 200 bikes, make 200 riders happy and, um, and go that way. So we have focused our powers where we can deliver the most amount of bikes at one time. Low volume locations will be following over the next few weeks and months. We will be clearing those out as well. Can you tell us the email address where the shipping email will come from? Temis, that will be from shipping at flx.bike. There, there is another email that goes out to when the tracking number, when we put the tracking number in, you should also receive one from Indiegogo. Battery question, is it okay to leave the baby maker charging when not in use, or is it better to let it drain and only recharge when it's getting low? Ray, it's not a big issue to leave it on for, for a day or two. Uh, we, we do recommend taking, taking it off the charger once it's got a full charge. You know, that's going to that's gonna prevent it from kind of drip feeding the battery and putting extra strain on it. It's not a, it's not a huge issue, but we do recommend taking it off the charger once it's fully charged. You don't want to leave it on there for months at a time. Philip, I want my baby maker... I don't blame you. A lot of people want their baby makers and it, it's going to happen. It's happening every day. There are more hundreds and hundreds of deliveries going out. Um, we've got 533 bikes going out that, that are just shipping over these couple weeks. We've got more in EU. So loads of bikes are, are shipping and being delivered. And I know you want your baby maker. It's coming and it's going to be well worth the wait. Rob, just want to say a big respect on how you respond to some of these comments as they can be a bit harsh and direct. Keep it up and stay strong. Hey, thank you so much, A. Rahman. Sorry if I, I butchered the name. Yeah, we're, we're doing our absolute best. Any, any criticism is well-deserved. You know, we're doing our best. We don't know everything, but we will do our best. We will build you the best bike and get that delivered to you. Temas, that shipping email will come from shipping at flx.bike. Chris, please be aware for shipping to Indonesia, custom often checking and open the package to see what's inside for most of packages to go through. Hey, thank you for that. I appreciate the heads up on that, Chris. We'll, we'll be sure to keep that in mind. Hey, we're almost through all the questions. I got to take a sip of water. Ray, thanks for your time, Rob. FLX rocks. Thank you, Ray. I really appreciate that. And for all the, all the folks who don't think FLX rocks yet, wait until you get your bike. You know, we really put our heart, heart and souls into building these for you guys. I hate that you have to wait longer than we thought it would be for you to get it. And I, I get it for some people to be pissed off about that. You know, totally understandable. We're going to get you the bike. And you will hopefully think we rock once you, once you get a chance to get on the bike. It will be well worth it. Phil S. Still here to support you, FLX Rob, but like to give you a Gita. I don't know what a, a Gita means. I'm assuming it means a hard time, Phil. Hey, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, it's well deserved, any criticism. So thank you for that, Phil. And thank you for tuning in to have a chance to, to talk with us man to man. Thanks again, Rob, and the whole team at FLX. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate you. Can you walk in your factory and buy direct? Jordan, uh, you can walk into our shop in San Diego and buy direct from us. We do not have baby makers at the moment. We don't expect to have any until all of our baby maker orders are fulfilled. However, we do have some other models that you can buy direct from us. Look us up, FLX Bike, on Google Maps or go to our website, flx.bike. You can also buy direct from us there. Mike, Mike, I do have your request considering uh, concerning the FLX. Baby Maker Group. If you can shoot us uh, maybe a, a ticket, support at flx.bike with kind of what's going on, we'd appreciate that. Wondering about U.S. orders from the first half of 2020, what percentage have been fulfilled? Bill, great question. 
Let me see if I have any information on that. Okay, U.S. orders. I believe we're close to the halfway point in the U.S. We're actually further than halfway. Uh, for example, Australia, 97% fulfilled. Canada, over 80%. U.S. is approximately 45% fulfilled right now. And we've got 500 plus bikes on the way and more coming after that Chinese New Year holiday. Khaled says, safety of the team and the workers is the most important. We have a COVID-19 in this world. I send my support. Deliver whenever you can, man. Hey, thank you so much, Khaled, for considering, uh, considering our team and, uh, and also for your patience. Really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Jordan, thanks, Rob. Andy, thanks, Rob, for the encouragement. Really appreciate Team FLX. Hope to get my baby maker soon. Andy, we will make it happen. It's coming soon. It's going to be well worth it. All right, that is all the questions. We are 20 minutes over time on this live, so I do have to wrap it up. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. More importantly, thank you for trusting us to build you the bike of our dreams. Thank you for your patience. For everybody waiting on the bike, it will be well worth it. For everybody who's already received the bike, thousands of people worldwide enjoy, enjoy those bikes. Ride safe. We love you. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.